got another walkthrough of a practical skills exam question. So this one's about a titration. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So a couple of definitions really to start with. So first of all, what's meant by the term standard solution? That's a solution of known concentration. Part B, what's meant by the term alkali? That's a substance that releases hydroxide ions or OH- ions in solution. Okay, so moving on to part C, we've got to turn these images into actual results for the results table. So rule of thumb here, if um, the meniscus is between the lines, it's going to be something point something five. If it's on the line, it's something point something zero. So for the first one, you can see oh, point one, two, three, four. It's between the line, so four, five. This one, 27.123, it's on the line, so 3.0. Next one, so 0.60, because it's on the line. Don't forget that zero, it's really important. And this one, 27.00. And for the third one, so 1.25, it's between the lines. And 27.75, between the lines again. So there's all the results in the table now. So we've got to work out the mean titrate. So we're looking for concordant results, results within 0 0.1 of each other. You can see titration one's too far out. They are concordant. So we'll take the mean of those, which gives 26.45 centimetres cubed. Moving on to the percentage uncertainty. So here's the little formula we use. So percentage uncertainty in each reading is the plus or minus value, which is always given divided by what's been measured times 100. Now, this is a titra, so it's actually based on two readings. So titration one's based on this reading and this reading. So the titra has two errors in it. So what we do here is we double that plus or minus value, then divide it by the titra times 100. So that's coming out at 0.37%. So the solution A had not been prepared correctly. What was the issue with the method used? Well, this solution was made up in a beaker, which is not the right apparatus. They should have used a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask. Moving on to part D now. So the calculation, as always, I've drawn my little diagram to visualize what's happened. So they've put 1.513 grams of the acid into the volumetric flask. That's gone into the burette. Now, often in these questions, 25's taken out and put into the conical flask. So this one's different. So it's gone into the burette. We're told the mean titra was 27.30 centimeters cubed. It's gone into, or it's been titrated against 25 same cubed samples of that concentration, sodium hydroxide solution. And obviously we've got to work out the MR of the acid and then come up with a structure for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide, concentration, times volume in decimeters cubed. That's coming out at 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. The moles of the acid in this volume here, this 27.30 centimeters cubed, is going to be half of that because we're told one mole of acid A reacts with two moles of NaOH. So obviously that's 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So we now need to scale up to how many moles of the acid were in the 250 cm cubed. So all we need to do is divide by the volume that they're in. So that'll give us the moles in one cubic centimetre and then multiply by 250 and that'll give us the moles of the acid in there. So that's coming out at 0 0.01282. And then the MR of A is just the mass divided by those moles. And the nearest whole number, it's 118. So moving on to the structure for acid A, so we're told that it contains two carboxylic acid groups, so the MR of each of those is 45. So if we take 90 away from 118, we're going to find out the mass of the remaining atoms. So that's coming out at 28, so in other words, two carbons and four hydrogens. So there's a couple of ways we can put that into the structure. You could go for that structure there, that's probably what I would go for, or you could go for that structure there. 